Nigeria Labour Congress holds nationwide protests at Labour Party headquarters. Ijo Youth Council calls for military intervention in Delta State killings. National Association of Academic Technologists shuts labs, studios, commences three-day warning strike. On the foreign scene, assailants shoot 15 dead in South Sudan. Hello and welcome to the news update on Trust Television at this hour. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for joining us and now the news in full. And we begin with labor matters. The Nigeria Labour Congress on Wednesday stormed the National Secretariat of the Labour Party in Abuja to protest against the party's national convention scheduled to hold at the end of this month. The Congress also demanded the sacking of the national chairman of the party, Julius Abure. The NLC leadership accused Abure of planning to hold a secret convention without the imputes of major stakeholders. The planned convention has picked Abure against the NLC and the House of Representatives caucus. The workers accused Abure of planning to destroy the Labour Party. Policemen, however, refused the protesting workers' entry into the party secretariat. The convention is said to be aimed at re-electing Abure as the sole administrator of the Labour Party, with concerns of secrecy surrounding the event. Similarly, the Kaduna State Chapter of the Nigeria Labour Congress on Wednesday joined the national body to stage a protest demanding the resignation of the national chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Abore. Although the national body of the union picketed the national headquarters of the Labour Party in Abuja, the Kaduna chapter only protested without blocking the state secretariat of the party. The state chairman of the NLC, Ayuba Suleiman, in an interview with Trust TV, said the struggle is to put the party on the right path. Uh, so it is expected the same here in Kaduna this morning. Uh, yeah, today that we picket uh, the Labour Party office in Kaduna. But in Kaduna we have a situation whereby the Labour Party office is not operational. Uh, but we have contacted the leadership. Uh, although even in Kaduna there are two factions claiming the leadership. But we were able, uh, as leaders of the Congress, uh, coming together with the state political committee, uh, we have discussed with some members of the leadership of the party. The Labour Party was duly registered by Nigeria Labour Congress. So we are the bona fide owners by that status of the Labour Party. But this is a political party. You can't deny any other person to join the party because if you are doing politics, you need all people to come on board. Now away from Labour Masters, the Joy Youth Council has called on the military to work strictly with intelligence to arrest killers of personnel of the Nigerian army in Delta State. The umbrella body of Niger Delta Youth Council said it has received distress calls from people in various communities that the military has been burning down houses and killing innocent people. Trust Evers Friday, Ebimobowe Peter reports. The leader of the Joy Youth Council, IYC, Jonathan Lokbobri, condemned in strong terms the brutal killing of soldiers on a peace mission to Okwama and Orubu community in Ugeli South local government area of Delta State. IYC said it's unfortunate that people would dare to invade and attack soldiers on a peace mission to resolve lingering communal battle between the people of Okwama and Okoloba communities in Delta State. Uh, it's a very sad and ugly development in the history of a region where lives of men in active service in the Nigerian military were gruesomely murdered, not in the battlefield, 
but simply on a peace mission where they attended to a distress call to intervene into an intra communal conflict between Okwama and Urobo community and then that of Okoloba and Ijo community who have coexisted together several decades ago. The IYC president further said the information available to him is that military are engaged in reprisal attacks in the community leading to death of innocent persons and destruction of properties. He said the military also extended its onslaught to Ibomotoro in Boma Kingdom in Bayosu State where houses has been burnt down, a lot of persons killed including elder brother to a serving chairman of Southern Niger local government area. If the independent investigation do not reveal that people from that community played a role in what had led to the death, the untimely death of these military officers. And then just based on immediate information without proper investigation, and then this repressal attack was taken on a community where dozens of our people have been killed and properties what uh, hundreds of millions have been bounced down. As a job people, it will be my my charge that we will, we will sue the, the government of a, a nation like OD community did, so that adequate comp compensation be made to that community. A nation where people who are law abiding are punished. Sometimes even before the criminals, it's, it's unacceptable. The Ijoi Council president, however, said they are yet to know the total number of innocent lives lost because the community is being taken over by the military as no one can go in or out of these communities. From Yenagua, Friday, Ebimobowi, Peter, Trust TV News, Yenagua. And now to the National Assembly. The House of Representatives has appealed to the technical team of consultants for the ongoing constitutional review exercise to make necessary sacrifices for the nation by helping to bath an acceptable and people-oriented constitution. The Chairman Committee on Constitutional Review and Deputy Speaker of the House, Benjamin Kalu, made the appeal at a meeting of the review panel with the nine-man team of consultants chosen to drive home its mandate in Abuja. The committee also formally inaugurated and issued appointment letters to the consultants. It also shared the timeline of its work plan with the consultants, urging them to study it and make their inputs where necessary. It will be recalled that the Constitutional Review Committee recently unveiled the action plan targeting December 2025 as a period to conclude its assignment. I solicit for your optimal commitment and dedication to this all-important national call to duty. Write your names in gold with your contribution, with your sacrifice. Working for the nation, partnering with the parliament will come with a lot of challenges. The parliament will ask a lot of questions in the manner you conduct your duties. But I want to assure you, it is only for the interest of the nation that those questions will come. And as you rightly observed, this is a call to national duty. It is indeed a privilege as well as an honor that requires patriotic responsibility. We want to assure you that we will study the work plan and we will try our very best. And we assure you that we will not let you down. This is, this is a matter that concerns every Nigerian. Still on the floor of the Green Chambers at the National Assembly, a bill seeking to grant five-month leave to persons who lose their spouses has killed second reading in the House of Representatives. Sponsored by Representative Saeedu Abdullahi, the bill seeks to enable the widow or widower mourn the deceased. 
spouse and make immediate arrangements for the challenges ahead. Abdullahi, who argues that there is a need for consideration of the bill on cultural and religious grounds, also said the bill is designed to place Nigeria among the top countries in the world in terms of workers' welfare as the law exists in many countries. According to him, research findings had shown that in Nigeria, organizations in the public sector grant up to 14 days leave for workers who lose their spouses for the burials. However, he said that 14 days is inadequate when one looks at the prevalent cultural and religious practice in Nigeria. The Speaker of the House, Tajuddin Abbas, in his ruling, referred the bill to the House Committee on Public Sector Reforms for further legislative actions. And on to labor matters again. In continuation of their one-week warning strike, Sanu and Nasu officials are protesting the non-payment of their four-month salary. They shut down the university gate, preventing both academic staff and students from entering the university. Trustee Viz correspondent Idris Jabrin, who has been following the situation, reports that the protest is coming three days since the commencement of the nationwide strike action. Carrying placards with different inscriptions, these senior and non-academic staff of the Bayere University, Kanu, are out on the streets to further show their concerns over their welfare. They shut down the university's entrance gates. <laughs> Students who are currently writing their exams were prevented from entering the university. Many lecturers and other academic staff were also locked outside the university's premises. As you are aware that we have decided to embark on a seven days warning strike and it's a directive from the national. Today is the first day so we decided to prepare this uh, peaceful demonstration to show our relevance in the university system. Well, uh, I can say there is 100% compliance from the members of NASU and SAM. Uh, as you know, uh, we are stakeholders too. Without the one teaching staff, the university should not function. According to the unions, the peaceful protest is part of their ongoing warning strike to pressure the federal government into paying their four month salary arrears. <laughs> if you can remember, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, have given the waiver to pay that with health salary for our members. But unfortunately, uh, some saboteurs there in the government just go ahead and pay the, uh, our sister union ASU they are, uh, with health salary, leaving us aside. So we don't know what actually make that uh, to be happened, but uh, that's why we are protesting now and we are in seven days warning strike so that the government will hear our voice. Although discussion between the federal government and the national leadership of the unions is ongoing in Abuja, but these striking workers say the protest is part of their struggle for freedom. The Minister of Labor and the Minister of Education, they have invited the national body. So they are going to have a meeting today. So we are waiting uh, for the response of the government. If it is favorable, we will resume. If it is not, then we will take another line of action. While the protest lasted, the university's entrance gates and all other important places like the Senate building remained under lock and key. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. Idris Jubrin and Kanu there. And now away from that, the National Association of Academic Technologists, Federal University of Technology, MENA, has locked up all laboratories, workshops and studios as it commands its three-day warning strike to press home some demands bordering on the welfare of members. The union, during the peaceful protests, also said the action is also to draw attention to lack of functional equipment in laboratories. Trustee Ives Abubakar Akote reports. At the permanent site of the Federal University of Technology, Gidankwanumina, laboratories, workshops and studios were seen under lock and key. The branch chairman of the National Association of Academic Technologies, Federal University of Technology, Mina, Suleiman Shaibu, said equipment in the university's studios, laboratories and workshops were obsolete and needed replacement. He said another challenge facing the university was lack of adequate technologies, 
saying that some people have died without replacement. We have made demands. We have uh, engaged the government in discussion, telling them, you know, giving the, them suggestions on how well they can equip our laboratories with recent state-of-the-art uh, equipment so that the students will have uh, the knowledge but you can't, you can you know, expect the student to have anything to, to for us to impact anything on the student with an obsolete equipment that doesn't even work again, or a chemical that uh, you know that, that cannot give you a better result. President of Student Union Government of the University, is a Chris Nobuke, said the strike was affecting the students, especially those in their final year. Uh, you know, this is the University of Technology, and our studies are not just based on theoretical uh, knowledge and exercise. But we are also supposed to be having hands-on practical on a consistent basis. And with this strike by the NAT, that's the National Institute of Technologies, it has to a great extent handicapped students. Because, of course, you know, we also have final year students who are carrying out their final year projects. And these final year students ought to be in the lab like almost every time to test run the projects they are carrying on and make new experiments and researches in regards to their projects. But with this strike, all laboratories are locked, all technologies are out of school, so you can't even consult any of the technologies to seek advice on what to do. You can't have access to uh, the laboratory equipment to test run your activities. So the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Farouk Ademokuta, assured that the university management will do everything possible to ensure that the strike did not have much impact on academic activities. Abubakar Akote, Trust TV News, Mina. This is the news update on Trust Television, coming up shortly. We'll take a look at how Makadi Riverine community survives on fishing. The news update returns in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. But if you're just joining us, this is the news update on Trust Television. Now let's take a look at a recap of some of our top stories. You heard that Nigeria Labour Congress holds nationwide protests at Labour Party headquarters. Plus, Ijo Youth Council calls for military intervention in Delta State killings. And now moving on to more stories and now to health matters. The Nigerian Medical Association in Plateau State on Tuesday uncovered a fake doctor, George Osai, who operates as medical doctor at religious centers and schools in the state. The association said it had been trailing Osai for a long time without success, until Tuesday when the association appeared at a church while he was operating. A statement jointly signed by NMA State Chairman and Publicity Secretary Bapigan William Audu and Estefanus Bintumbako said Osai was arrested in collaboration with the State Ministry of Health. The NMA chairman, however, called on members of the public to report any suspected fake doctors to them as drastic measures would be taken to investigate the matter. He commended security agencies for their cooperation and enjoined the public to always seek the services of health professionals within the confines of a health facility rather than engaging anyone selling medicines or claiming to be a medical doctor. I Agiogo, a river and community on the south bank of the river Benue in Makadi, is mostly occupied by the Jukun tribe, known for fishing and preservation, a natural pond where they organize a fishing exercise once in a year. Trust TV captured the sights and sounds of the 2024 edition of the expedition, as reported by Benway. Benway's reporter, Jimmy Azadi. Let's take a look. According to locals here, fishing is an ancestral art 
has been preserved from time immemorial among the Jukun ethnic group. Although the pond is open to all, including visitors, as we found out, Jukun residents have however adopted this fishing exercise as a yearly routine. Uh, this place has been in existence for quite a long time, even before our forefathers. So what they usually do is that every year during the rainy season, they blocked it. And as soon as the water begins to dry up, the, some of the fishes will remain inside here, which after some times, they allow the public to come and catch. All right. But up to now, as you can see them, they come forward fishing. And it has really helped people from this community, some of them to build house, some of them to even you know, raise some money to go into what business. From the harvest to the annual ritual, the community head has a sharing formula that is accepted by everyone. Uh, due to the catching of the fish in this uh, community, Jogo uh, community, uh, distribution will give every client their own. The stranger within the community, the chief will call them to give them compound by compound. So for a long time, since my father, even me, it is true, this kind of uh, catching of fish, my dad trained me in the school. So, both my own children, both fish. Fish. He need a good management that will look after the fish pond, the, the pond very well. The fish, how the water is going to dry, the coming of the water. So this one is very good management that you will see with the fish. They also said most youths in Ayogo community live decent lives through fishing by making proper use of the river Benue. Uh, my benefit in this uh, fishing is I train my children for school, I pay their fees, I feed them, I buy the food. How about More than 30 or 40 something years I have uh, five kids. Then I train them with the fishing. Residents come out in their numbers to participate as it is tradition. In the past, the depth of the pond yielded more fish, but in recent times, the river is gradually drying up due to natural and man-made factors that call for immediate dredging. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. Jigawa State Government is intensifying efforts to improve access to clean water and eliminate scarcity throughout the state by implementing robust maintenance strategies for water supply facilities. Governor Omar Namadi affirmed this commitment while inaugurating training sessions for 27 artisans tasked with repairing faulty water supply infrastructure across the state. These artisans representing each of the state's local government areas are expected to receive comprehensive training in repairing various water facilities, including boreholes, reticulation systems and other plumbing works under the auspices of the Agency for Youth Empowerment and Employment. So, uh, I'm sure you will recall that uh, it's part of our 12 point agenda and also part of our declaration that before the end of four years, we will, inshallah, create 150 million years in Jigao State. Today, we are launching the first phase of that program. Uh, we are launching about 27 people, one from each local government, that they will have uh, a working capital of 10 million naira each of them, so that they will be able to sell plumbing materials in each of the local government headquarters. Now, the essence of this is to link it up with what we have done the last one month. The last one month, we have also launched, uh, we have trained about 250 youths, and each one of them on, on how to repair hand forms and how to construct it, how to install it, and how to repair it. Uh, water, treatment, equipment, and all other equipment related to water supply in, the, in their respective local governments. And therefore, all those equipment will be available for purchase by the local government chairman and other people within that local government. So by using this medium, we believe shortage of water supply is going to be reduced to the BRS minimum, if not, not at all. Away from Nigeria now, unidentified assailants have killed 15 people in South Sudan's Pibar region, including the commissioner 
According to a senior official on Wednesday, this incident marks an escalation of violence within the country. The attack occurred on Tuesday as the commissioner of Boma County in Pibo was returning from a village, a village visit. According to Abraham Kelang, the information minister of Greater Pibo Administrative Area, Kelang indicated that the perpetrators are suspected to be youth from the Anyork community within the region. Those skills included Boma's deputy army commander, government officials, and the commissioner's bodyguards. Despite a peace deal broke out in 2018, clashes persist among various armed groups, leading to civilian casualties and displacement. You are up to speed with the latest news in and around Nigeria. And with that, we've come to the end of the news update at this hour. But remember, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join us via our YouTube platform and our live stream. Thank you so much for watching. Join us again.